from the first day of my practice, I did not know how to heal anybody. And I thought it was my, I blamed me for not knowing how to talk, take care of my very first patient, inpatient, who was, had a psychotic experience and some other strange thing called alcoholism, which I assume was just incorrect. And uh, she taught me a great deal because I realized that even though this was July 1st, 1962, and I'm, I thought I missed all the lectures on how you help people, because the ones I went to were what you call people. And I did take all those courses and stuff but in med school, but holy crow, I must have missed how you, what do you do about it? So I ran to this library at the Institute, which was world famous. I looked up everything I could on treatment. I couldn't find anything on how do you treat persons with schizophrenia. Lots of stuff on how you, re, you know, diagnose and then break down and all these different sub-labels and all that, but nothing on, except one book by a, a, a woman, a Swiss psychoanalyst named Sesha Hay. I can't imagine anyone would ever know this. And she wrote a book called Symbolic Realization. It's a pretty title. And it was about her work with someone in psychosis, and she used uh, two apples in her mind, they were substitutes for her breast, and her belief was to be feeding at that level in a face-saving way. And it was a beautiful, beautiful one-time-only story. Well, I thought, oh my God, I can't go in tomorrow with two apples and sit down with my patient and say, I know this may seem unusual, but you see these two apples, uh, make believe I'm a woman like your mother and easier to breast. <laughs> And you were probably poisoned at your mother's breast. That's why you have schizophrenia, because I, I know that. But uh, these are good apples. I mean, so I was afraid. I was afraid. Like, you think I'm courageous, but I was afraid to go there. So I inhibited myself. Ha, ha. Although I'm using the story many years later, aren't I? So, so anyway, I kept thinking, well, I got to fake it till I make it. I mean, that phrase wasn't around in my world. I've got to be her doctor because she believes in me. That there's no reason for it, but she does. And so I did my best to be soothing, confident, and in my mind, courageous because I was, it was improv theater and I had no mo role models for what I was doing, except probably stuff I'd seen in the movies or something about how doctors behave or something. My father was a doctor. I saw what elegant physicians do that's healing in his practice of obstetrics. So I probably did all that. And she got well. She started telling me about AA. She ended up leaving and I said, well, and this was the other thing I did because I truly thought, look, clearly she got well. So probably, I did, one of us did something right, probably. I didn't use the theory of self-limiting illness yet. And it was all an artifact. So I was curious, like, so what helped you? She thought and thought and thought. First of all, she was dumbfounded by the question. It never occurred to her anything had helped her. She just got better. So I said, well, how about when I brought your husband in and we had those sessions? So that almost got kicked out of my residence. It's only seven days into it because you contaminate the relationship if you bring in a real person, right? You can't get the true material. Well, I brought the husband in because I didn't know what the hell to do. But I didn't say it that way, so it's very important that you come in. So I was rediscovering marital and family, but it was out of total incompetence. She said, you know what finally helped? She thought of what finally helped. When you finally listen to me about Alcoholics Anonymous, and I'm thinking, all right, so she doesn't know her diagnosis. Okay, so she doesn't know the truth. Okay, so she wants to go to these meetings. And I said, oh, yeah, remember? And then you let my husband take me to some meetings. And you know, so that really helped. I said, it did? I mean, it did. <laughs> so anyway, I thought about it and I said, well, what did you get there exactly? I'm just curious to know your version, of course. We all know about AA, you know. I didn't say that. And, and so she told me essentially about fellowship. Right? She told me essentially about fellowship. So she left. I signed her out correctly, whatever that 
schizophrenia word was. She signed herself out as alcoholic, having had a psychotic experience, needed time to dry out. Thank you very much for the kindly environment. Thank you for letting me go back to my support group as a non-psychotic recovering alcoholic. So she leaves with that preposterous formulation, and I believe, and I leave thinking, it's amazing people can get well when they don't know what the right diagnosis is. Right? So I'm giving you a sort of somewhat comical version of what it was really like and still is.